It's not every day that Adam Ragusea encounters some food that frightens him, but、uh, this happened the other day, right here in this very dining room, when my lovely mother-in-law came over for Easter dinner and served this traditional within her family.、Uh, Cold spinach ring, which is an example of a thing that we have here in the United States called a congealed salad, that was very popular in the 1960s and then、uh, kind of fell off. And、uh, I'll admit it's not for me, but it's surprisingly good. I'm going to show you how to make it, and we'll talk about why it is. Okay, so the first thing we got to establish is that I love my mother-in-law very much, and she watches the videos and reads the comments. So let's all keep that in mind. We're not here to be mean. She knows this is a kitschy item, right? But it's something from her childhood. And what's hilarious is that I mentioned my mother-in-law last week's video, and I described her as having this kind of upper Midwestern vibe going on in terms of her cultural background, which she does. But she was kind of taken aback by that line because she's lived here in the South for like 30 years, and she's like, "I'm Southern," and I, and I was like. And then to prove your point, you brought this over to my house, and we were kind of needling her, trying to find out what was in it, and she didn't want to talk about it. And she said, "Okay, first thing you do is you open up a box of lemon jello," and that was the funniest half sentence that I've ever heard in my entire life. So yeah, you take a three ounce box of lemon jello. That's the normal box size it's sold in here in the United States, and、uh, they tell you to dissolve that in a cup of boiling water, and then to chill down that water.、Uh, you can make it go a little bit faster if you just boil like half a cup of water. Stir in the stuff really, really well. Get it dissolved, and then you can just put ice cubes in there to rapidly chill down the solution and just measure by displacement. No Midwestern recipe would be complete without the 10 ounce frozen square. I don't know why it's a square of chopped spinach. And what you can do if you want to thaw that the easy way is just take it straight out of the package. And if it's still frozen solid, you can just take it over to the sink, just pour hot water over it, just you know swish it around. It'll thaw in two seconds, and that's fine because you do need to drain that and get all the moisture out of it anyway. Otherwise, this thing won't set into the beautiful shape that it's in. Here come your aromatic vegetables. Dice up an onion pretty fine, unless you want it to be ultra chunky. And then、uh, same deal with like a celery stick. The recipe says half a cup of celery. I'm guessing that's going to be one stick, and just cut that down into little matchsticks, and then cut across. You can get those pretty fine. Then it calls for、uh, two tablespoons of lemon. Lemon is generally two tablespoons, one lemon, a tablespoon in each half. That'll work. Catch the seeds so they don't go in. This is refined. Then it's got to be cottage cheese. One cup of、uh, small curd cottage cheese. It specifies small curd in the recipe. Otherwise, I think again the chunks would be too big. Half a teaspoon of salt, but this is an older recipe, so it probably means table salt, which is more dense. And so I think I need to go for like three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, something like that. And then yeah, it's got to be mayonnaise. Got to be half a cup of mayonnaise. Mm mm mm. Okay. Oh, my lemon jello is now too cool. It's all thickened up. I won't be able to like stir that in with everything and get a smooth homogenous mixture. That's fine. You can just melt it by warming it up slightly in the microwave again. Don't get it too hot, otherwise it'll cook things. And everything in here is supposed to be raw. Now I normally don't do the slow motion, sexy pour over shots in my food videos, but、uh, boy, just got to do it this time. Look at all that jello. And get in there and stir real good. Get everything mixed up. Get all that spinach through there. You know, spinach like this—the frozen chopped spinach generally serves a function, kind of like rebar in food. It's like a reinforcing fiber and becomes wonderful fiber in your diet too. Hey, this is a health food. Look at the high protein. Get some kind of mold. I reckon my bunt cake pan will do. Grease her up for good measure, and we just pour that in there and try to forget that it looks like it's already been eaten, and then we can just. Chill it overnight until solid. All right, I need to get this smell out of my nose. Let's go ahead and make some coffee. Trade Coffee is the sponsor of this video, and I can't wait to go over to my little coffee wall and see what they've sent me now inside one of their beautiful little compostable red bags. See, Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different coffee flavor profiles and pairs you with the best coffee is using. Art and science, machine learning and stuff, of course, but also just all the humans that they have at Trade who are tasting coffees from independent roasters all over the country and deciding what's best, what they want to offer to their customers. Me, you. Now, Trade can connect you with pre-ground coffee, of course, or any other kind of coffee that you're into. I just really like to use my hand grinder and look dramatic while I'm doing it. Actually, I just did that because I still had the camera in slow mo mode. So the point is, Trade selects a whole bunch of different coffees that you might like, matches you with them, and then.、Uh, Just has the local roaster wherever they are send you your coffee directly, and、uh, they roast within 48 hours of shipping, and so you get a really fresh product, which 
really makes a big difference. Time for the second pour. So get your own freshly roasted bag of coffee for free. First one can be for free when you sign up for select subscriptions right now at drinktrade.com slash Ragusea. Whoa, look, that is serious, look at that. That's drinktrade.com slash Ragusea for a free bag of freshly roasted coffee with select subscriptions. Thank you, Trade, for sponsoring this video. Mm. All righty, so the cold spinach ring. Dude, I asked my mother-in-law for this recipe. Here's my phone. You gotta see what she texted to me. <laughs> she literally texted me this picture. This like tea stained, God knows whatever else stained printout from her mother that uh, she's obviously been cooking from for a lot of years. I love that kind of stuff, don't you? All right, so after that sucker has chilled, it is nice and firm, we gotta get it out of the mold. And for that, we're probably gonna need to pour just a little bit of warm water into the sink. And this is a really good deep panning thing for any kind of cold molded dessert or even savory things like aspics. You just let it sit in the warm water to just melt that layer of stuff that is connected to the mold. And the trick is not leaving it there for too long because if you leave it there for too long, it melts too much and then plah, yeah, that happens. I was overconfident. I got cocky, okay? I don't have it when it comes to making congealed salads. Let's try it again. I mean, this isn't cooked or anything. We can just put it straight back into the mold and chill it all over again. And a couple hours later, we'll just uh, dip it in the water for just, just a minute and then uh, try that again. And here we go. <laughs> okay, watch it again, half speed and with the sound. <laughs> and I'm not really sure what to make of this. I mean, is it a dip? Uh, it kind of reminds you of spinach artichoke dip, which is, comes from the same milieu, cultural milieu, um, but it's actually not nearly as rich. Uh, seems like it's a little bit more of a, dare I say it, healthy salad, right? Like it's got the mayonnaise, but other than that, you know, it's cottage cheese and vegetables. And uh, okay, here we go. I mean, honestly, that tastes great. <laughs> you know what it tastes like? It tastes like a like a tuna salad or an egg salad that has sweet pickle relish in it, right? That same kind of basic combination of oniony and sweet and everything, and it's, yeah, I'm sorry, that's actually pretty good. And it does not look nearly as good as my mother-in-law's. So, why in the heck do people like my mother-in-law make congealed salads? Well, they seem to rise in popularity in the 1960s, probably chiefly as a result of the rise of the Jell-O Corporation. You know, this very successful company made an industrial product that is fundamentally based upon exploiting an agricultural byproduct, that is, leftover animal parts, hooves, skins, and stuff. That's where you render gelatin from. So anyway, all these new Jell-O products were on the market, and I'm sure that there were marketing geniuses at the Jell-O Corporation and elsewhere that decided to design recipes that wouldn't just be for desserts, right? Jell-O, not just for a dessert. Though the first of the kind of famous congealed salads that people have been able to dig up in the historical record goes back to the early 20th century and a recipe from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania generally considered to be part of the mid-Atlantic or northeastern region of the United States, but Newcastle, Pennsylvania, if you look on a map, is on the like far western edge. It's on the Ohio border. And in my opinion, speaking as someone from central Pennsylvania originally, the midwestern region of the United States really begins in the western half of Pennsylvania. Where the demarcation line is, I'm not sure. It's somewhere on the soda pop line. Well, Eagle Steelers would be an obvious dividing line too. Uh, but then how do you say eagle? Do you say eagle or do you say eagle? Point is, congealed salads are now particularly associated with, uh, well, the Mormon areas of the country. So, you know, Utah, and then also uh, the upper Midwest. And uh, long may such traditions continue in someone else's mouth. <laughs> what do you think? You want some? You know, dogs are not supposed to have alliums. <laughs>